impediment. God dang it, Tupper. I just fixed that. As you leap into the fire pit, Princess Melani, remember the vengeance of the priest of Palin. I wish you were here to see it. That great monument to modern engineering and science. The giant airliner San Francisco, falling out of her hangar and starting on her main voyage to Australia. Never before in the history of the world such a gigantic enterprise been undertaken. Over 6,000 miles of watery desert, the massive San Francisco will undertake to link the east with the west. From a dream, an idea, a thought, the San Francisco has become a magnificent reality. Yes, Ellsworth. Establishing a regular passenger and freight service between California and Australia will bring us a fortune. San Francisco means more to me than dollars, Jackson. I see her as a monument of science and engineering to blaze the way to greater living. <laughs> All of which doesn't mean a thing if the dollars aren't there to pay the way or if the San Francisco fails to reach her destination. San Francisco can't fail. Good heavens. What is it? A radiogram from Clark. The fuel tanks on Clipper Island have caught fire. The flight must be delayed. What? Call off the flight? Are you crazy? We have the lives and safety of those people to think of. Contact Captain Fairchild and give him orders to return. Now wait just a minute. You may be the president of PDA, but I'm the major stockholder. I insist the San Francisco continues on her way. Do you realize that now they cannot refuel at any point before reaching Australia? Of course I do. The dirigible has fuel enough aboard of her to fly the entire distance between here and Sydney. To call the flight off now would absolutely ruin it. I'm not thinking of dollars. I am. Public spirit and morale has been tremendously built up by our publicity experts. Like a call off the flight now would cause a great wave of lost confidence in Pacific dirigible airlines. People would begin to doubt. I cannot take chances when human lives are at stake. You can't buck us, Ellsworth. 
The San Francisco must go on. We'll leave for the island at once. Agent 66 reports that fuel tanks and dirigible base on Clipper Island have been destroyed. Our next move is to stop the dirigible San Francisco before our operations on the island are discovered. Harris, that's your assignment. Yes, sir. Check on visibility. Their report should have come in long ago. Call Clipper Island for visibility. Dirigible San Francisco calling Clipper Island. Calling Clipper Island. Standing by. Calling Clipper Island. Calling Clipper Island. Dirigible San Francisco calling. Calling Clipper Island. Dirigible San Francisco calling Clipper Island. Standing by. Clipper Island, sir, to try to reestablish contact. I don't like this. Chief Engineer reports rear starboard engines are backfiring, sir. Having cut it off keeps on giving trouble. Aye, aye, sir. Okay. The natives. 
They're crazy. They'll do anything. Flip around on this taboo. They don't want nobody on it. And that ain't all. There's something on that island. I'm the only one who knows about it. What is it you know? It. <coughs> And Where did it come from? Who is out here? Nobody fast. A blowgun. get no information from him. He's dead. I'll clear this with the authorities. But I must leave the details to you, Mr. Ellsworth. What do you intend to do? Go to Clipper Island as radio operator for PDA. You mean you were volunteering to go to that death trap? The seaplane leaves for Honolulu in an hour. I intend to be on it. Two ten reports. A United States government operative is on his way to Clipper Island. That's in your department, Lamar. Take care of him. I liked it once, sir. He'll never reach the island alive. Hello there. Hello. My name's Tupper. Anthony Tupper. How do you do? I've been a bit puzzled about you ever since we took off at Frisco. I say, uh, where are you going? Honolulu. That's where I'm going, too. Oh, uh, where, where are you bound for after that? I'm an employee of PDA. I'm filling the position of radio operator at one of their South Sea stations. Fancy that. Uh, is your station on an island? A non-inhabited island? Quite likely. Fancy that. Toddling off to be all alone on a desert island. Regular Robinson Crusoe. I guess that's that. Oh, Paul! Oh. Oh, oh, Robbie himself. You know who that is? She's a princess. A native princess. I made a range. Wait. Let's move out of there. We're sailing on a windjammer for Comatoa and Clipper Island in the morning. Good. We have a tough assignment, Hank. There's more to it than anyone suspects. It wasn't a tough job. You wouldn't be on it. No, 
Don't worry about it. It'll be done all right. Good. I say, he's a magnificent specimen, isn't he? Are you taking him to the island? Hey! Well, well, I'll be my boy. Mr. Tupper, this is Mr. McGlary. Any friend of Crusoe's is a friend of mine, McClowski. My name's not McClowski, and don't slap me on the back. You'll rob his man Friday. I'll wait for a pound note. I'll probably be seeing you down the islands before long. <laughs> yes, I I'm doing a book on the natives. Uh, by the way, uh, which island did you say you were going to? I didn't say, but I'm to be stationed at Clipper Island. Clip? Uh, you're going to Clipper Island? Princess Milani might be harder to handle than you figure. I don't think so. You've got to be careful. You may be high priest, but she holds those natives in the palm of her hand. And the horse is a worthy gift to your highness. He is beautiful. Bruno, take charge of them. He didn't bother you. That's all right. Bring that rigging over there. Steady, boy. Steady. Easy now, boy. Easy. That's nothing at all. That radio operator seems to get along pretty well with the Princess Milani's horse. Too well. And with the Princess Milani. When we arrive on the island, I will take care of him. They'll be holding a feast of welcome on the island. Better go ashore and watch it. Fun are you sailing for Clipper Island? Oh, not until tomorrow. We won't unload the horse until morning.
lot of energy for such a hot place. Challenge the rustler. I wonder what gave him that idea. I have been telling the people you are the greatest wrestler on the island. You who can master a horse so easily should have no difficulty with a man. I didn't come here to challenge your man. If a challenger refuses to fight because of cowardice, he must prostrate himself before the other. Why don't you flatten the heathen? You can do it. I will, when the cause is not a personal one. He'll fight if you hurt his dog.
Sounded below a headed Slipper Island. Come on. Gas. We practically made it. Clipper Island's a short distance ahead. 